Welcome back to the WAC Podcast. I'm Kendra Sheehan, now joined by Seattle U men's soccer head coach Nate Delicon. Just coming off a massive win over number 20 ranked Washington. I know this is a big in-state rivalry. It's also named the Fewing Cup now in honor of the former head coach Pete Fewing, who you have coached under and known for quite some time. Walk us through what that win was like for the program and, and, and getting this team geared up and ready for conference play. Yeah, I think, um, you know, it's, uh, the atmosphere was great. I mean, I think we had 1800 and, you know, our stadium's small, so it was pretty intimate. And, you know, when, uh, when people are all around the fields, it's, you know, the atmosphere is electric and, um, you know, it was great for the for the players as well because they did a did a great job with the game plan on what we wanted to do and you know being a in state rivalry it's one of those areas where they play with each other on you know, summer teams or have played with each other on club teams so it's always uh, it's always good to to get the upper hand there so and of course newly named the Fewing Cup. Uh, what was Pete Fewing in attendance there? Did you see him? Was he at his own? Home? Yes. Yeah, he was. He was there, and uh, he was in there. We have a VIP tent, so he was there with a lot of past players and um, people around the the soccer community, and was able to say. Yeah, I mean, it was a, got a little bit uh, hectic at the end in terms of you know students rushing the field <laughs> and like so. I, I briefly said hello to him uh, after the game, but. Uh, but yeah, it was uh, it was a great, great team win, and and really happy for the guys. So. I've heard when I spoke with uh, James Morris last week that he's in attendance to to most of the home games. I know as you coached under him, how, how much interaction do you guys have during the season? Is he still you know is helping guide you with anything, or kind of like, hey, look, take the reins, I'm done, you got this, lead my program to success, or not his. No. Program. Yeah, no, I think um, we talk um, often and, you know, he stops by training at times or he'll stop by the office. And so, um, you know, he's always welcome and it's great to to kind of chat with him about, you know, things and um, how to how to improve things as well. So. I don't think we ever really, really got to chat about, you know, your, your change in becoming a head coach, formerly the associate head coach for you. What has been unexpected in terms of new responsibilities or things that you didn't necessarily have to handle. And now you got to do a lot more and manage a lot more things as head coach. Yeah. I think um, the one thing is you have to delegate some things now. So, you know, as an assistant, you're used to, to doing a lot of things and wearing a lot of hats. And now um, it's more, you know, I'm not taking every training session or, you know, you're, you're kind of giving, the assistants a little bit more responsibility as well. So, um, and so that's been a big change for me, um, for sure. Um, and, you know, I think the, you know, you have to make decisions too. And at the end of the day, you know, as an assistant, you give your, you know, give your input and, um, but now those decisions stop with you. So um, I think those are, you, you take a lot of input from, the staff, which has been great, um, and um, then kind of work to to make a decision that's best for the team. So. When you look at this schedule this year, right now, 5-2-2 two, and two ahead of the start of, of conference play, you previously tied 14th ranked Denver, you beat Oregon State, you've had some big wins and you've had a lot of tough opponents. Where do you feel like this team is after that gauntlet of non-con slate as you get ready for, for conference play? Yeah, I think... Um, you know, that was one of the things coming in and, you know, the, the group we've, we've kind of talked a lot about, you know, I guess it's cliche because everyone kind of says it, but taking each game as it comes one at a time, not looking, not looking backwards, not looking forwards, but really trying to stay in the moment, um, you know, and so I think that's one of the, the things the group has been great on and, um, you know, we've played some tough opponents, but you know, I think now it's, all right, how do we learn and how do we improve and what can we can control as well as a group? So. When you look at the start of conference play, you look at, you have Utah Valley, then Air Force at home, 
Then you hit the road to play Grand Canyon, a pretty tough three game game stretch out of the bat. What are you looking forward uh, from your team most in that three game game stretch to to start conference play off on the right foot? Yeah, I think, you know, right now we're just focused on the game on Thursday and and just making sure that we're prepared and uh, making sure everyone understands the responsibilities for the game and and what we're trying to do. Um, you know, there there's no easy game in the WAC. I think that's, you know, we've been in the conference long enough that, you know, any team can beat any team. And, you know, I think that's what we're really stressing to the group that, um, this game on Thursday is is going to be a very hard opponent, and um, they do a lot of great stuff. So, yeah. how important is that home field advantage for the first two matches, at least? Yeah, no, it's great to great to be at home. I mean, we just basically started school, so you know, it's great to have the guys, you know, at home so they can attend class. And um, you know, I think that's a that's a big part with the beginning of school. If you're traveling a lot, it always makes it a little bit more difficult. So. Can't miss the first week of school. It's just, <laughs> it's just not allowed. <laughs> a lot of a big storyline when we looked at this team last year and this year was just a lot of injuries last year and, and really uh, took a toll on the team as it head into that late season and the uh, conference tournament. This year with a lot of those guys back healthy and ready to go, what's the biggest difference you've seen in this team from last year to this year with those playmakers on the field? Yeah, I think, you know, it's it's been great to to kind of be healthy. I guess we still have some injuries. And so just like any other team, and I think it's more of um, making sure that guys are ready to step in when their numbers called. And I think there's a, there's a huge trust factor within the team that, you know, anyone can step on and anyone can do the job and making sure that they're ready um, and that they're mentally prepared, not only physically, but mentally as well to come in and help the team be successful. So I think those are the things that we're really trying to stress um, to the group and just making sure that, you know what, your number could be called at any time. And those are the times where, you have that opportunity to come on and and help the team. So you have a guy like James Morris on the squad, a veteran, six goals, three assists already. And, and thank you for allowing him to speak with us last week ahead of a game day. I think you were playing Loyola Marymount and he showed us the beach you guys were on before uh getting ready to take the field. What impact does he have on, on this team when you have a guy that can be able to close out in front of the net and put balls away? Yeah, no, I mean, it, James is, it has been great. He's been here. Um, he knows the program inside and out. You know, he knows what we want um, as a coaching staff as well. I think, you know, for him, the the leadership that he's brought this year has been his biggest attribute. I know, you know, goals and assist, but, you know, how he how he's able to, to help his teammates and how he's able to be a leader um, and to hold – the players to the high standard that we expect. And so, um, you know, that goes in part with how he's doing on the field as well. So I think it, it kind of goes hand in hand in terms of that. So. I always like to ask about the goalkeeper as a former goalkeeper myself, Charles <laughs> Lamphere in the net. How well have you liked the way that he's been commanding the defensive line and being able to, to place players where they need to be with having that vision of the field from the back? Yeah, Charlie's Charlie's worked extremely hard. Um, you know, he's he got a lot of confidence playing this summer in the in the USL two, and you know we've we've kind of gone back and forth on goalkeepers, and um, you know both of them understand that it's a competition, and you know Charlie um, made some some really big saves for us in uh, in the Washington game, and um, I think you know he's he's improving, and I think um, his confidence is high after that as well, and. Um, you know, he's been, he's been great. Brady's been great. I think we're lucky to have two, uh, two number ones. So, yeah. Absolutely. And I asked James Morris this, so I'm going to ask you about what you think the identity, if you had to pick a word, the identity of this squad. Tough one. Ooh. <laughs> you know, I, I think, you know, it's, it's definitely resilience. 
um, and or resilient, I guess. That's what he said. <laughs> uh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> I guess we're on the same page then. There we go. So, um, I, you know, there's times everything's not going to go right in a season. And, um, you know, we've kind of talked about, all right, you can't get too high. You can't get too low. Um, you know, you have to really focus on in the moment and, um, what you're doing at that time. And so, um, you know, we came back, I think Washington tied it up twice, you know, and so, you know, you could have dropped your head, you could have done this, you know, even after the Denver game, we could have walked out of there with, you know, they score in the last minute was their disappointment. Sure. But I think they were already on to the, to the next game. And so I think those are the things where, um, you know, this group is, is gritty that you know they're they don't let things get to them as much um and kind of we try to keep them just focused on what they're doing and in that moment so. well coach thank you so much for giving us a little bit of insight on your men's soccer program that is nate dalagon head women or head men's excuse me soccer coach over at seattle u Thank you so much. Good luck this weekend as you take on Utah Valley in your first conference matchup. That game can be viewed on ESPN+. Plus. Thank you all for listening to the WAC Podcast.